Science is an important part of general culture. Every day is a, a discovery, every day you learn new things. I get interested in science because I was always curious about all the wonders of the world. We are an international group of scientists working at the ILL on different instruments and we have different fields of research. It's only a short journey for me across town to come to work, but every month hundreds of scientists come from countries all across the world to Grenoble, to the Institute of Low Management to do experiments. The research we do here impacts across all of modern life. We can get unique information that's essential to solving some of the major challenges of our time. We're constantly improving our understanding of how the world works. That's why you'll find chemists, biologists, engineers, specialists in magnetism and nuclear physics, medical researchers working side by side and sharing their discoveries and their knowledge. As a chemist, I'm interested in the way in which molecules interact together to form clusters or, or particles. These particles are about a millionth of a millimetre in size, so they cannot really be seen by a normal light microscope. Newton has a perfect tool uh, to investigate uh, the shape, the size, and also the interaction between particles. We came up with the idea for our newest invention on, on a drive from Bristol down to Grenoble. Well, the new invention was magnetic soap. Normal soaps work because they have two different parts. One is soluble in water and the other is insoluble in water, but is in fact soluble in oily substances or dirt. In inventing the magnetic soap, what we have done is to replace the normal water-soluble part with one which is now also magnetic. In two days, for example, it's possible to measure at least 200 samples. So that means that people have to work day and night. We know we're going to be doing some exciting experiments and we're going to be working at the cutting edge for the two or three days that we are down here. It is always very exciting. After the experiment comes the interesting part, which is the writing of the, of the paper. That's where we share uh, what we have learned from an experiment and we share it to the scientific community. Since we invented magnetic soap, uh, there have been many, many ideas for how we would uh, use this. We've been contacted by uh, many different industries. The most likely applications will be in environmental cleanup, separation of um, oils, and also minerals from slurries. Everything is made of atoms. The air you breathe, the food you eat, the mountains, the rivers, the cats, the dogs, the computers, the cars, absolutely everything is made of atoms. The universe is full of trillions and trillions of atoms, and atoms are tiny. You could fit a million of them in a speck of dust or a hundred thousand across the width of a human hair. At the ILL, we use beams of neutrons to look inside this tiny world and then connect it to the world of everyday experience. In neutron scattering experiments, materials are exposed to intense beams of neutrons inside our unique and novel instruments. By measuring how the neutrons change direction and speed when they pass through the material, we can work out where the atoms are and how they move. The images we collect reveal the molecular structure and motion inside the material, which can then be directly related to the physical and chemical properties of the material in the everyday world. In the everyday life, we are using a lot of artificial material. Among this material, we have magnetic materials. For me, magnetic materials are extremely important for our society. They are used in a universal way. You can find them in cars, in your house, even your, your cellular phone. You can find examples of such materials in the head of the hard drive. They can be used for storage of information. They can be even used for calculation in quantum computer. Magnetic materials are made of assembly of atomic magnets. The neutrons are very sensitive to the atomic magnet. They can probe how they are arranged, how they move, and we can probe their response 
to external parameters such as the temperature. What I try to do is to find new materials. You can produce interesting properties that might be of potential use for application. We have fantastic instruments and we see the fundamental things that happen at the atomic level, which is fantastic, I think. The ILL is one of Europe's most long-standing and successful collaborations. France and Germany founded the Institut de Langevin, the ILL, in 1967. The UK joined a few years later. The Institute's named after two famous scientists, Paul Langevin from France and Max von Laue from Germany. Since those early days, another 12 countries have joined as scientific members. Neutrons are everywhere in nature. Together with electrons and protons, they make up the atoms that are the basic building blocks of all the materials in the world. Neutrons are tightly bound with protons in the nucleus in the middle of the atom. In a nuclear reactor, like the one here at ILL, atoms can be made to split apart and release the neutrons. It's a process called nuclear fission. From this control room, the reactor can be started and stopped. Nuclear reactors are usually used to make electricity. This reactor is a low-power reactor used to make enormous numbers of neutrons for experiments. The reactor has a very low power compared to a power station, just 58 megawatts. It's a very clean and safe way to make neutrons for science. The buildings are designed to withstand earthquake and other natural disasters and to prevent radiation from accidentally escaping. A network of monitoring stations in the surrounding area keeps watch to ensure there are no emissions. I'm a physicist at ILL and I'm taking care of the production of radioisotopes for nuclear medicine. Radioisotopes have important applications, for example, treatment of cancer. Therefore, ILL decided recently to start this new activity, which was not imagined when ILL was created. And now, with the high neutron flux, we can produce big amounts of high quality radioisotopes for medicine. So, the radioisotope is not used directly in the patient, but it is linked with a biomolecule which acts as a carrier. And this biomolecule is very specific that it can identify individual cancer cells of a certain type in the patient's body. And it will carry its radioactive payload to the cancer cell, hook up, and then stay there till the radioisotope decays and destroys or damages the cancer cell. So we produce, for example, lutetium-177, which is today the gold standard as therapy isotope in nuclear medicine. It is uh, irradiated here and then it is shipped to a radiochemical or radiopharmaceutical lab and then they will send out individual patient doses to hospitals all over the world. ILA runs all through the day and all through the night. It takes about 500 people to run this research centre and they have a tremendous diversity of skills. We need nuclear engineers and technicians to run the reactor, but we also need people to design and build the instruments and sample environment for the experiments. We need biologists to grow protein, we need software developers and IT specialists to manage and visualise the data. We need train drivers, we need electricians, plumbers and many, many more. I'm senior fellow at the ILL. I've been working on our cell membranes in the last 15 years. Cell membranes occupy a very large part uh, of our body and they, uh, they are uh, essential for our life. There are many diseases that are uh, related to um, modifications of uh, the structure of cell membranes, diseases like the Alzheimer's disease and there are other um, modern diseases like diabetes or Parkinson. So neutrons are uh, a very powerful tool to, for the study of membranes uh, because they can uh, study the relevant uh, sizes uh, of membranes, in particular the thickness of a membrane. Cholesterol is widespread in, uh, in the body and in particular uh, it mainly it is uh, inside cell membranes but it circulates also in our uh, bloodstream. It has been found recently that uh, the amount of cholesterol uh, in brain uh, may be uh, related to the formation of uh, amyloid peptide uh, domains. It, it, so it is extremely important to understand the role of cholesterol and the structure of these domains uh, to try to have a better understanding of the causes uh, of their formation and the causes of the Alzheimer's disease. Training the next generation of scientists is also crucial. 40% of the people who come to ILL are PhD students or postdoctoral researchers in the first stages of their career. Our education and public outreach activities aim to inspire school children to follow a career in science. 
I love this great because it's uh, very international and we have always the most powerful neutron source in the world at hand to develop new things and to be always at the forefront of science. Our role is important for the society, for the future of the society. Science is the way by which we understand our world and how we can use the natural resources in the world to improve the quality of life for everyone. I find it really nice to work here. We are close to mountains, I love mountains. <laughs> I'm very proud to be director. The ILO operates the world's leading centre for neutron science. We have a global reputation. Every day we make scientific discoveries and those discoveries connect with real everyday life.